I'm Vanessa Frank. I'm one of the pediatric providers here at CBHA. I work mainly here in the Othello Clinic with Dr. Barrio. Hello everyone, I'm, my name is Elsie Garza and I'm one of the mental health counselors here at CBHA as well. And today we're here to talk to you about how you can talk to your children about the COVID-19 virus. Yes, we know there's been a lot of changes recently for you and your family, so your kids are probably having so many different questions, so many different uh, worries or stresses that um, they're kind of you know, sharing with you or talking to you about. And so it's really hard to give your children the right information when maybe we ourselves don't have the right information or feel like we don't have the right information. Um, so one of the things that we're asking, you know, parents to, to really do is be honest. It would be the very, very first thing. I think honesty is very, very important so that your kids know that it's kind of, we're in a, in a space of uncertainty, but there is still, still some control within our household. And so if they ask you questions that you do not know the answer to, it's okay to say that you don't know the answer to them and that you will try to figure out as much as you can if that's going to help them feel better about the way that your family is handling you know, this pandemic as they're calling it of COVID-19. So like Elsie said, the most important thing is to be honest with our children and express that it is okay that we don't know everything about it. There are very specific things that we know about coronavirus, which is what one of the COVID-19 is. And the things that we know are some of the ways that it spreads, um, how we can best protect ourselves against it, which is with hand washing, uh, coughing into our elbow, not going out around other people when we're sick. And right now, because it is considered a pandemic, staying as much as possible away from other people in non-large groups. So primarily just staying in our households with our families. Yeah, so that's pretty general information and general information that a lot of parents can find out through a credible source. And so one of the most important things that, again, that parents can do is find out what your kids already know find out what they do know versus what they don't know and try your best to fill in gaps if you can, if you can do it in the right way. Sometimes they are hearing different things from different sources and can be creating false ideas or false uh, you know, concerns or questions about what's actually going on. So you know, have an, have an open conversation with them about what they feel is going on, what they already know about it, and then start a conversation from there about how you can kind of fill in some of the gaps maybe and you know, make them feel more at ease or more in control as a family and the things that they could do. Some of these things, so the amount of information you want to give your child very much depends on their age. So your preschoolers, your toddlers, you really don't want to talk much to them about what is going on. You want to limit their exposure to the news, um, talking about it in front of them. And the reason for this is that age group is particularly known for coming up with these grand fantasies that the worst case scenario is going to happen to everyone. So we want to make sure our children know not everyone with a cough has COVID-19. Not everyone who gets COVID-19 dies. Mm -hmm. We do have ways that we can help treat the symptoms and get through this virus. Yeah. Ensure the information that we're giving to them is age appropriate so that they're able to process it in the right way. That is very important. And just kind of know your kids. Know if, you know, when they're saying something, if, they're if there's any changes in mood, any changes in behavior, be willing to have a conversation about them. You know, be willing to have a conversation about them, with them about the changes that you're seeing. Um, also, very, very important to almost maybe daily or every other day, give them space to talk about what they're thinking about it. Give them space to kind of express what they're feeling, how they're dealing with it, how they feel like things are kind of unfolding. Um, because the more that we communicate about something, the less power that it has over us. So if we're giving our kids the power to talk about something, um, it becomes more manageable. And we want to make sure we take their fears seriously. So most school-aged children, their fears about this virus have to do with how it's disrupting their everyday life. Right. The fact that they're not able to see maybe their grandma, grandpa, they're not able to visit and play with their friends like they're used to. They have the most important part of what their day is, Monday through Friday, taken away from them right now. They are not able to go to school and see their teachers and friends on a daily basis. And so we just want to reiterate, we know this is hard. And you can talk about some of the things that you're doing that are hard also during this time that are different for you and how that affects you to help them work through those feelings. Definitely, we want to normalize adjustment because adjustment is hard for everybody. Uh, change is really hard, so as long as we're normalizing it, that it is very, very difficult, um, and I think we open up the conversation, that's better. But I like to touch on something that you said that was really important because 
sometimes we can feel like we're out of control or we don't have any control over what's going on because a lot of things are really, really different. So how can we as parents or we as adults give kids, you know, the feeling of, I can be in control at least a little bit <laughs> about some of the things that are going on. And so some of the ways that I think that we can do that is by giving them control of knowing how often to wash their hands, kind of how far they should be away from different people, different things that are okay as far as like coughing, making sure that you're taking the control or you're taking the initiative to protect yourself and other people by coughing into your elbow. Another really cool way I, I was thinking of maybe that parents can give their kids some control is maybe having them join them in creating an activity for the day, <laughs> creating some type of a routine. What is it that they want to do and what is it that you want to do um, that incorporates maybe some academic things and some physical activity things. Help them be part of the change so that they they feel a little bit more in control of what's going on as well. I've also been encouraging um, like my friends with children and uh, patients with the children that they're not in school, this isn't a true vacation, so we do still wanna do schoolwork so you can make really yeah. fun science <laughs> projects to do as a family. You can have fun ways to learn math and read books together, and by bringing those school things into their daily life right now, that helps to help with the fact that they're not going to school, which yeah. is their normal. Yes, yeah, so it's one really cool way of making them feel more in control, but also it's a super healthy distraction for them. Gives them something to do, gives them something to focus on, and it keeps them interactive throughout the day. And then of course with your middle school or high schoolers, you are able to have a little bit more um, in-depth conversations with them. They're able to have a little bit more reasoning about what we do know, what we don't know, what we're doing to learn more about that. We just wanna make sure that we encourage, especially our middle school, high school kids to not do what we call dangerously avoiding. So we want them to be making sure like, okay, just so since kids aren't getting as sick from the COVID-19, that doesn't mean that we want them going to the store. That doesn't mean we want them at the park playing basketball with all of their friends. We still want them to be doing all of these precautions because they still can get it and we want them just to be making good choices like we are as adults. Yes, healthy choices. The, the best thing is give them current information. Make sure that you're always updating your kids about what's going on, especially if there are more age-appropriate middle school or high school children who can understand a little bit more about their role in controlling the spread and taking care of their health and their family's health. Um, and then just be willing to keep the conversation going. Like I said, it's not a one-time conversation because so many things are happening and so many changes are happening almost daily. So be willing to keep the conversation going with your kids. They need it, they need you, and I think it's also something comforting for us as well to be able to know how our kids are doing and know how they're, um, they're responding to all of the changes that are happening. Exactly. If we are wanting the new updates and needing to know no more as things are knowing more, our children are also at that area. Yes. So my main takeaway as a medical provider from this is we want to make sure we're giving adequate, accurate information and that we are helping them learn the things that they can do to help prevent the spread of this. Mm -hmm. And my main objective for this video is to ensure you guys that talking and conversations and more communication is the best healthiest things for he best healthiest thing for you and your children at this time. Be open to talking about them about whatever they may need. And I think Elsie and I both agree that the, one of the ways we can help our children learn to deal with the anxiety they are feeling is modeling great ways of handling our own anxiety Definitely. during this process. Making sure that we're choosing healthy coping mechanisms versus maybe the unhealthy kind. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.